Asiatic. Nonsense! Like it's an, it should be a real drink in its own right, even though it's only five it's gonna years. Be, it's going to be a permanent one for them. I read. Really? Mm. So well, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the latest episode. A little bit of a confession to make. As you can see from this, picture quality is stunning. Rodders ain't here with me. He's normally over there, but he's missing purely because we did the episode. We recorded it. And you're going to see that in a minute. Big problem was Muggins here ended up losing all his footage. So what you will find is I'll be looking at a different camera. You probably won't see me looking into your eyes. You won't see get lost in my beautiful pools and all that. You know what I mean? It's, anyway, enjoy. Technical failures. Right. right, should we make a start? Yes, let's let's do. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to session number four. I'm going to go with <laughs> must be the, the main sessions. This is obviously. Um, so we are today going to be having a wee dram of Ardbeg. Mm. Ardbeg is distillery number four. The dram we're going to be tasting is going to be... Without further ado, Ardbeg Beastie. Young one, five years old. I'm going to open it now and pour some yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I personally, I'm not going to like this. I know it already. It's, it's gentle, peated. It's waste fairly heavily peated. I'm going to put a wee splash in my glass. Um, Noise. See, nose is not so bad. It's not so bad on the nose. Uh, what is it? It's uh, bourbon oil or also? It is. Yeah, how did you know that? Oh, oh, this is yours, page. isn't it? Yeah, you better have a decent slug of yours. Yeah. I read that as well somewhere, but see, the bourbon's all right. Oloroso is all right. But it's the peat for me. I'm not a peat fan. Have you got a backup? Like, have you got another glass that you could take that really, really slowly? I'm just drink my other jams out of. I don't want to then keep swapping between peated and unpeated is the problem. What, what I might do is leave, have a taste, leave that, drink something else throughout the episode, and then just have a wee taste of that at the end when it's had a bit of life. Should have bought some water up actually. Might have been a, an idea, maybe have a wee drop in it. Not a big fan of water in my whiskies, but if it does the trick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a look at my magic box over here. What have you got? A Kalina glass. A Kalina glass. It looks like it was cleaned about 20 years ago, which is good. <laughs> so, Wee Beastie, what do we know about That's it? That's all friendly between the... Uh, what do we know about Wee Beastie, mate? Come on. I think we said it already, it's five years old and it's got col uh, Oloroso and bourbon in it. Alcohol. Alcohol, it's got a bit of alcohol in it. No, oh, it's not heavily it's, strong. Uh, 48. No. It's <laughs> 47.4. Oh. That's not it? bad. And I did read, because I'm educated like that, Put that out there to my to my fans, <laughs> my view oh, my view in millions. Um, that that this is gonna be in their in their permanent range. So I assume it's like their core range, because our big obviously is. Uh, you could you, have you researched a bit about the distillery? You're gonna tell we'll people a little bit about we'll it. We'll get into things here, yeah. but so, it's uh, to do with this one specifically that uh, it's not a joke. I mean, it's not a joke. Like in general, you're wanting oh, a, like a clown pops out with a long finish on our bags, and it's got a, it's got this massive competition, but a huge jolt of peat, but lo um, really light fruity qualities that just sort of massage it out and make it all gentle for you. If that actually comes through, that would be nice to see. You'd like your oh, oh no. See, I've got fear of peated with you. Nine hours of heartburn ahead of me. I know. One sip. Do you know what? I actually had a sausage roll for lunch. That's heartburn <laughs> material for me anyway. I blame that. Since I've been, since I turned 78. You smell nothing. What, can you not smell it? I'm aware that there's alcohol in front of my face. You are an expert, aren't you? But once it starts going up the back <laughs> of my nose, that's where the, uh, yeah, that's where where the you music taste happens. It. You taste it in your nose. I remember that from a previous episode. <laughs> that's the <laughs> truth. Jesus. A load of shite. <laughs> So, aren't big. That distillery has been going a while, hasn't it? Oh, get into basic facts? Yeah, let's have a little oh, bit Oh, let me about. taste this first. Well, you can taste it. We can talk about other things while you're tasting it. Well, you talk like a robot at the screen. I'm just going to... Talk like a robot. Listen to him. I'm far too professional. Our big distillery right. was founded in 1850, <laughs> but Look. reports show that it was actually in operation for decades before that. That's not really a robot. You, you're trying to get a job as a tour guide down there, or what? Oh, it's 
got a good nose. I love the pitted nose, but I can't. Here we go. So I didn't get the hit straight away, but the, the finish is. Whew, that's all peep. Not as bad as I was expecting, to be honest. I'm not saying I was expecting I'll beg to do a bad jam, but as in not as badly peated as I was expecting. Oh, I didn't look into that as far as you can probably somewhere find the numbers of what it what it is in the dram PPM in the, the dram rather than yeah, PPM on the green. Yeah, I didn't find anywhere about the PPMs on this one. I think their standard is fifty. Is it? Yeah. But then they, they, like I said, I read this was a heavier peated, so maybe this could be higher. No idea. I'm going to be tasting, I'm going to leave this for a length of time it takes to make this episode, so probably about another four hours. See, I'm finally tasting. I can actually finally... You're going to enjoy this one, I think, long term. Yeah. But it's specifically, I can finally taste... I can go look for bourbon in it and find the bourbon and go look for <sighs> the sherry and find that. For a long time, I didn't know what I was looking for with a bourbon. You're going to be sneaky with that. Yeah. A little miniature of wee beastie as well, huh? No. This is not. Oh, we will do one. We'll do a miniature for the wee beastie oh, to go course, into right. our um, prize winning kits mm. uh, for a later date. Absolutely. I can't remember if Dave's much of a fan of his Pete. Dave? Yeah, yeah. he likes his Pete. Yeah. yeah, he does. Yeah, yeah. He does indeed. Maybe, yeah. As Dave Brody we talked about, Dave is our weatherman, come poet, come. Because you'll hopefully be up here next time. Yeah, yeah. Not to you know jump the gun or anything. Yeah, indeed. Um, so that our big one's all right. We um went out towards our big last week, didn't we? Mm. Had a nice little trip out there. And the total cost between us, I think, was uh, three biting ticks and sort of yeah. six travellers. Can't mention it. I got a tick bite on the ankle. Rod has had a bite or I've two. I've got a bite on me. It's got a bite on his ass. <laughs> <laughs> it's my lumbar, <laughs> it's not my arse. <laughs> Rollins has officially been bitten on the bum. <laughs> can't reach very To be fair, so it's still in if there. it's going to happen to anyone, it would have been Rollins. Yeah, but to be, be fair, like also, um, just a bit now, we're going to put a clip on a little bit later on, um, a little, probably a few minutes, just a little brief thing from our, our trip out. We actually went to a village, a local village to Ardbeg called Solum. It's a plague village. You'll see more in the in the clip anyway, but um, we'll put you a little um, an interesting little spot on there. I actually went flying as well, didn't I? Took a bit of a tumble. You'll see that. <laughs> kind of annoying, you, annoyingly, you predicted it as well. I but I love I love the moment. There's if you see the clip at some point. <laughs> I love the moment where it turns from, well, here's here's me just being a wacky dude. Oh no, this is actually <laughs> happening. <laughs> 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 the trouble is, the footing's not great around it because it's like an old village. There's ruins and things and. It's really not safe underfoot when you're walking. You're an walking. impressive expert, though, being able to decode what the meaning of all those stones are. I was one of them. You're going to give too much away. Let these people see it for real. So anyway, we're going to do a little little uh, teaser of it um, later on in this episode. Um, but what we've also done is we've we've done about 16, 17 minutes separate. Um, That's the full trip. Separate, basically, outside broadcast of our trip to Solom. And can um, say we we oh. ruin it a little bit because we're daft and ridiculous. So we're mixing up stuff from fifty years ago and stuff from three hundred and fifty years ago. Yeah, that's how we did. That's how we yeah. roll, isn't it? Really. And uh, you know, like this is where the rec room. This is where the the kids would hang out, and then this, this is, is where the, the grown-ups would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is where the prostitutes lived. <laughs> and uh, yeah, but and no firm line between when we know we're talking shit and when we're, we're yeah, we got them all blends into one. Imagining don't. we're this proper historic, but despite us, uh, out that. I'm looking forward to the other distilleries as well going out there. Dalton Cross, there's, there's yeah. a few. Uh, uh, what was the Dalwini? No, no, not Dalwini. What the hell? What was the castle? Dalwini? The castle that you were you were talking. Oh, Drumlanrig. No, not Drumlanrig, is it? No. Oh no. Oh, D- Dunnevag. Ah, that's Dunny right. Vague. That's the one at um, Lagavulin. So we'll there's go out and talk a bit really about that. Lovely. They're just generally in the area yeah. down there. So as we get Absolutely. to the other distilleries, we can Absolutely. maybe do a few more trips out. And How's your dram? Good, get yeah. better. I don't know what to say about it. As I say, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm picking out the bourbon and the sherry. At the end of this, we'll ask you whether it's one that you would recommend people to have a try of. Or try, guaranteed. But all right, is it worth buying a bottle? Is it good enough to buy a bottle? Yeah. Is it? I think it has retail, so I can't 
guarantee it. There's about thirty five pound on oh, exactly on our big it's, it's young. Model. It's young. I think, and that that kind of comes across in the pricing for it for being thirty five no, pound. No, I. Uh, but um, it doesn't come across palate wise as a young one. As does far it? as any kind of a burn goes, it is done by the back of my throat. Yeah, it's not like I've you've, you've had ten year olds easily that you're feeling every yeah, inch of the, yeah. you know. I'd say at the moment I'm not feeling any after effects from that peak. Normally, I'm, you I'm, normally I'm with dying peat. within minutes of heartburn from the, from the peat of drown. But, I've um, just had a weekend of a lot of Lefroy with uh, swearing in the attic. My brother there. And, uh, so this is not screaming peat at me at all. You know, it's, it's, absolutely. Absolutely. And it's watered down a little bit. It's still a good strength. Yeah, 47.4, 47. yeah. yeah. What's our core range? 46.3. So it's only just above our... Oh, cool, mate. Right? But for a young one, I should put it down quite high. Just finish it in ten. Minutes. That's all right, mate. We've got a big bottle there. Help yourself. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's um, it's nice. Our beds a lovely place. The setting is beautiful, isn't it? I did read actually that they closed for about eight or nine years. They've had the a rough... eighty-one to eighty-nine. I think they actually closed. I no, were... they own. No, by. no, they were still they were still up in operation, but they were making nonsense of it. Was it? Were those I, the dates? I read that they closed. They closed from 81 to 89. So I don't have my paper, so... Um, and then they reopened in 89, but... Um, but who are they owned by now? It's Louis Vuitton... Henny, Henny, Moe Hennessy. Moe Hennessy. It's MHLV. Yeah, so they've got a decent pedigree, haven't they? You really, get pedigree the, just by yeah, being I mean, bought but by... The, they're, owned by a, they're owned by a company that are uh, obviously reputable. They know what they're doing on their mm. own products, you know, so... Oh, well, everything I, I read about it is there's there there's been... Uh, They've got some daft, wiggly bits of history, but uh, the, the most recent stuff that's behind all of their reopening, getting back on track, and then all the renovations, the increase in production size, it's just a work of love. Like the people, it's big corporations, but they're they're being gentle with it. You yeah. know, they're not they're not. It's not a soulless monster at nah, all. And absolutely. when you hear about the rough spots, it's like oh, the heart just goes out. Like this is quality if whiskey. You have one. Oh, forgot. Sorry. I don't have forgetting. a heart, I keep telling you this. Jesus, when are you going to learn? Um, also, what did I read? Their production. Last I heard their production was like 1.25 million. But they've just had a second set of stills yeah. put in, haven't they? I don't know what that is. I think so that, that was to double, that was to double production, is what they were saying. That should then put them with double the output. Yeah. And we'll actually come back and we can readjust some of the hmm. distilleries and stuff. When a new bottle comes out and stuff in two years' time, we can... There's no... There's nothing cheap about that in, in terms of like it's just five so you have just to just five you years have to old keep just 35 pounds but for it's that. actually decent yeah you're impressed aren't you i'm happy oh yeah yeah you're drunk already no when are you ever happy unless you're drunk are you just asking that as like a life question no, right. what do you mean you're happy without being drunk yeah <laughs> well there's there's other things in life you know and where are your trousers today where are your royal mail trousers <laughs> Absolute turd. Those are comfortable trousers. <laughs> comfortable trousers. Oh, yeah. Me. That's a bad sign. And they're really? cotton as well. They're not. It's he's not like they're made of plastic. He's wearing grey, dark grey cotton trousers. <laughs> <laughs> well, everything <laughs> sounds great when you describe it that way. <laughs> There's no other way to describe it. He looked like a right fan. That's not the bloody point. The point is, point I'm saying is about that whiskey, we're, yeah, we're finding out about the technical details. I've been looking forward to this because. There was a, you'd seen you'd never been on a tour there. Yeah. Uh, I believe one of the earliest, earliest tours I was ever on. Not not definitely not the first, but one of the earliest ones was at Ardbeg right. forever ago. And there was a lovely tour guide there. No idea what her name is. Oh, that's forever what it's ago. all about for you, was it? But, but it's, it's her, what she was doing that years later when uh, Brother suggested, uh, you know, maybe I should get into this. Him or you? He was suggesting I should, All right. you know, I might enjoy this, which yeah. I do. Uh, it was her that I was basing, you know, basing it on, because she was she was young. She wasn't getting, she wouldn't have high expectations from the crowd, mm -hmm. you know. There wasn't some grizzly old monster from behind the stills yeah, to come out, yeah, and, yeah. right? She she's doing it elegantly, but then whatever whoever was in the group just peppering her with questions, and she was telling sort of a fanciful story, blah blah blah, this and that. And then it was just like a curtsy. She just dips down into benzene rings and little chemical details, like every tick, and just the effects on your on your tongue. And then just straight back up into the. And it was so like that. That is what I want. That is what exactly what I would love to. And I'm way out of it by now. I'm no. Should we talk a bit about sexism yet. 
in the industry. No, hell no. I, 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 I just think that a lot of tourists that come to the island, they come to the distillery, they're, whisk, they're old men, whiskey fanatics, and then they get some young girl as their tour guide or their, their tasting experience. And you can straight away see that they're, but these girls are fantastic. Some their young girls are fools. Great. But the, yeah, this is it. But you know, they're expecting to have some grizzly old man doing the tasting with them or the tour with them because they seem to listen more or whatever it is. But I think it's so bad news for the girls because these, these girls, these women that are doing these tours and stuff, are fantastic. They're so good. Yeah, at Yeah, but their I job. don't want to stick up for them because that's sexism. No, it's, it's, it's not. just this is just it's this not. is several, 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 several individual excellent girls yeah. in the industry. You Absolutely. Just, to the point where it just starts stops being a question. It's just, of course, it. look, look, excellent, yeah. excellent, excellent. It's amazing how many of them are pleasantly surprised by the end of it. And I'm saying to this to this day, I'm not on her level. I'm trying, but I'm not on her level. Just that elegant mix of well, go right into depth and then just skip right back up to the. I think if you go for the boring, factless kind of tour, then I think you've hit the spot. I think you're yeah. equally as good as she is. Um, but if it's interest and entertainment, then maybe you're not quite there. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not really the, the technical details just she wither is. away with any <laughs> kind of yeah. And there's no hope of being at all entertaining or charming as she was. So <laughs> my dream, yeah, basically scuppered. <laughs> I got no chance. That was your dream. Wow. Well, well, anyone was, else she was like my, win the lottery? She was the standard to go for, you know. But then benchmark. Another mm, That's a good word. Mm, I'll go with that. But then uh, another tour was on there years later. Uh, it was with a guy who was he was coming across really sort of not suspicious, uh, resentful. He sort of kept yeah. In, in our bag, we we did we did this, not not them up the road, and it was focused on Lafroy a wee bit. Um, I didn't really understand that level of sort of get off, we're good too, that sort of attitude until I read more about yeah, the history. Like, yeah. See, I I, I just think that each of the distilleries the need the other distilleries. Do you know what I mean? If there was just one distillery on Isla. How many tourists would come to the island to visit one distillery? They wouldn't. Uh, tourism uh, isn't what it's about. No, it's not. No, absolutely. It's about making good whiskey. Mm. But, but I'm just thinking for the revenue, for the island, for the for the infrastructure. You know, like the hotels and the the other businesses on the island that are reliant on tourism. If it's just one or two distilleries, it would it wouldn't be anything like it is now. It's the fact that we've got so many in such close proximity. Is what making it such a draw to come to Wilder for these whiskey fanatics? No. Yeah. You talk. Don't don't say no because you know I'm right. I'm telling you no. What's right. what's the, the 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 most visited? Is it Aaron? It's Aaron. Yeah. The most visited distillery in uh, the world, I think, or at least in Scotland. Is it? Uh huh. One one distillery. Ah no, they've got some second, but it's, yeah, it's, so it's not on the same scale. Excuse me, I'm cleaning my glass. This isn't a conversation. No, I'm trying to away. reminisce about you're you know, just being this lovely uh, expert. You're just being awkward today. Everything I say, you're just shooting me down, Rodney. Well, I've been on two tours at Ardbeg, and you've been at none. That's it. So your views on Isla tourism? Yeah, but I've also worked on the other side of the tourism, haven't I? The hospitality and stuff. So. I think Trump card. Thank you. Vastly more experience. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's me blowing out the water. Oh, that's all right, that one. How are you enjoying yours? Mine's lovely, yeah, but I know what that one is. It's my favourite jam of all time. Thoroughly enjoying that. Yours is going down all right. You're enjoying that, aren't you? What yeah. else? What's this sound of the bottle? Should we give him a bit of info off the bottle? That's never a good idea. Why not? Go ahead and try and pronounce it. Reeking flavour in its path. There is plenty of things in the world that cannot be fully explained. <laughs> Him for one. Um, one such peculiarity has emerged from the peat bogs of Isla. Is that you as well? Mm -hmm. Honestly, it's like describing you, isn't it? Said to be boring. It is you. They're not doing themselves no, any favours no, here. It's, it's, it's said to be a feisty young creature. Well, that's definitely not you. <laughs> Uh, witnesses have spoken of its formidable bite. Okay, I'm getting bored of reading them. I just uh, finally. It's never a good idea is to read the bloody bottles. Uh, just five years old, the legendary smokiness of Ardbeg is untamed by age, revealing the inner beast of this Isla icon. There you go. We just finish it with that. That's a nice little bit. To... I think our wobbly table's kind of. Worry about that. Just don't knock it. Don't knock so it. basically, this is named after a mouse. Is it? Oh, right. Yeah. It <laughs> yeah. is a mouse, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I knew that. Which, when you say that, doesn't stop to make any kind of sense of the yeah, it's a bit strange, super yeah. peatiness of it. But it really isn't. It really just, I mean, it's peaty, it's obviously yeah, that, but yeah. it's, uh, it's exactly what they were predicting or describing as balance, yeah. you know? Yeah, There's, absolutely. It's peat plus, it's not overwhelming it at all. No. Oh. I'm going to go back to wine, finish that off at the end, but. No, it's nice. It's nice. Sitting, you know, come back once we know what we're talking about with the yeah. dram because I got completely distracted. I just went off. Yeah, you're enjoying that one, aren't you? Yeah. Are you surprised? I mean, not that it's a nice dram. You're going no, to, it's I'm always going to be a nice dram, but is it, that it's, but it's uh, better than you even thought. It, 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 but I start talking nonsense about front, middle, back of it, you know, like the, the like a, a watery, gentle spot in the beginning that ties the fruit at the beginning, uh, in the middle, watery in the middle, fruit at the beginning, and that peat combination of all the flavours towards the end. Long finish. I hate talking like that, it's despicable. <laughs> I did you know I didn't stop you there telling you how bored I was. That was bad. I let you go right to the end. It was yeah, sad it watching your, your will just get <laughs> crushed <laughs> <out. It> was <laughs> <laughs> But do you know what we actually have a people that tune into this that are actually interested in your opinions on, on you know top, middle and bottom. I haven't found that. The only thing I've found is if we try and stray into technical areas we get slammed in the nuts for uh, not covering them adequately. Do we? Who buy it? You know, various people, you know. You can tell me about that after. we will have to sort that out. Mm. I know people, you know. Yeah. Oh, the, what, you're you're having a word without saying anything, that that sort of people. That's what you were offering a few days ago for. <laughs> <laughs> offering someone. <laughs> mm -mm. Just setting them right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, it. that's how I look at it. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Ultimately, it's doing them a favour. You know, they were out of order. And Absolutely, they need to be now they're back on held track. accountable for such comments. That's all I'm saying. But and if it happens to put money in your pocket, then you know. Well, you yeah. know. It's an inadvertent benefit. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do, and I'll beg. So, how can you talk about this with you? What did you find out then? What about? I beg. I've told you most I'd of beg. it. I didn't really look very much. I was only flicking through when I was trying to work it out to sort out my camera. But Beastie's nice, isn't it? Now this is going to be, um, I believe, going to be one of their permanent fixtures. But what else have they got? They've got their 10 year old, isn't it? There's their That's their standard, yeah. their, their standard core bottle, isn't it, really? But they do quite a few other Cory ah, So Should we yeah. go through a few of them and tell you what they actually are and what they mean? Yeah, why not? Like the core of Reckon is the whirlpool, isn't it? That's north of Have you ever been Europe. out to that? I haven't yet. No, you need quite to take that trip. Yeah, we go I've heard, but you need to be careful and do it at the right time. Yeah, do we, your own research because, look, whoever does the tour, of Gus take, Newman. Oh, I was yeah, that's what you say, man. Gus does a good trip out there on his boat. Yeah, so. but I've heard a few people coming back from it saying we didn't really see much. It wasn't really that impressive. It was sort of yeah, overblown. But, so you need to do your own research on. When at the times it's a permanent whirlpool, it's like the world's second biggest, it's the second or third largest natural permanent. whirlpool, isn't yeah. It? But it has times when you can imagine just every wreck in the world getting drawn into it. But some 16 year old kid has swum across it right across the that's the point, the epicenter, but right across what would be the center. It of has it. times where it's, yeah. it's there, but it's not that that's impressive. It. But mm -hmm. yeah, so we should have a look into that. Sarah would help us with that information, I would think, because her dad. Yeah, of course. He would know, but yeah, that'd be a bit of a trip worth doing. It's a couple of hours, isn't it, by boat? It's four-hour trip, isn't it, there yeah. and back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's worth a look. So Cory of Reckon's one of their bottles. I'd like to see that. Supernova was another one of theirs. That was to celebrate. They Didn't they send a bottle into the space station? <laughs> really? I believe they sent some jams up to their, one of the space stations, and then it came back, but they wanted to see the effect it had going up into orbit. I'm probably talking absolute shite again. <laughs> Maybe not. I Does that make any sense? Would that, would that rung a bell with you? I haven't looked too much into whiskey and space travel, you know, I'm not... Have you not? Not up under What's that. What's Oogadow? Oogadow. That's their that? water source. Ah, is it? Yeah, that's so where they the, get their water. The and right. I believe at Ardbeg, they actually, they do walks out there. They take you out to where the source of the water is. Mm. So that's a nice one you can do from the distillery. It's nice. Why don't we do Stoysha? You should get that in there somewhere. Stoysha, the... that's a Bonarvon one, isn't it? We'll come back to the next time we do a bit about Bonarvon or. It's not accessible or something. Yeah. Yeah, so um, um, what else have they got? Um, so the Supernova one, as I understand it, that was the, the world's peatiest whiskey or something in 2009, at yeah. least for the islands. But I believe they were in competition with Brooke Lady. They both had this competition. At that Who time, was going to make the biggest, the, the heaviest peated one, weren't they? I don't think of Octomore as 
much in the last like, maybe eight mm. years or something. Yeah, three hundred and some ppm was there. Yeah, no, that's the point. Is that if this is all still, uh, I think Supernova might have been ninety. Aye, but right? you see, I've Which heard is that once you get cold. past ninety, you can't accurately decide yeah, but to see if there's any difference. Possibly, quite possibly, but it's really difficult to know. Uh, how many people are just getting bitter and like, oh, what are you doing? You're just balancing the peat on them. You know, like it, yeah. it just starts getting uh, petty, isn't it? Is it? It's gimmicky on the one side oh, and right. petty on the other side. And that thing with the not knowing, you're not being able to differentiate with how much peat's in there after 90 ppm. But it's like sugar. They say when you have three sugars in a cup of tea or coffee, anything more than that, you can't tell the difference. That's a lie. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so I can tell for a fact that's a lie. I can tell you exactly how many you put in my cup. You could tell when I put nine that it wasn't the amount. Ten, yeah. <laughs> that's well, that's it. I don't know how you're phys- still standing. Physical specimen mm. ripped. Guns for hire, loaded. Right. In the summer when we're up here, I'll, I'll show you the, the guns. Do you have a dancing lady tattoo? Yeah. yeah. I like those where you. Oh, I did, did, did. Like a hula girl. <laughs> yeah. Just hear that. You got <laughs> That's solid class. And it just. Yeah. Have you got tattoos? No. Why not? You scared? No, it's uh, like a joiner move. It's sort of like, oh, I want to be unique too. Oh, right, so you're not having one out of principle rather than having one because you actually want one. Well, it's the same reason I don't wear a medallion. It's like it never, it never made any sense to me to, to, to you know, you see, put a hair clip in. You ways, can't you? I, 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 I've got three, four tattoos, but it's purely because that's what I wanted, not hmm. because the trend is for getting tattoos. Because it's Partly you're way older, so you were yeah. doing it when nobody was I had doing my first tattoo when I was 30. Oh, okay, when it was just becoming fashionable. Yeah, I mean, I was in the army, nearly everybody in the army had bloody tattoos, yeah. but I just didn't have one because at the time I didn't see anything that I'd want on my body permanently for the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, but I say now I've got one happy. But yours are yours. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. I've known, I've known. Uh, I wouldn't go for a tramp stamp or I wouldn't get something, you know, everyone's having the word written here, but their best mates having the same word, you know. Yeah, in Chinese and, and it, it doesn't actually yeah. mean what they think it well, means. Well, I did have a Chinese tattoo, but I was covered up now. I did have my name in Chinese on here, but that's now been a big cover-up. Did you find out what it actually meant? Yeah, because I went to a Chinese New Year at this restaurant. I said to Blake, what does that, what does that actually mean? Can you tell yeah. me? He said, yeah, Colin. I'm like, okay, that's cool. I'll take that. I didn't go in there and say, does this say Colin? Because he could even say yes. And then, mm. yeah. But yeah, I actually got him to tell me what it said. Oh, so it's probably something like mouth forest. Eh, what? Colin would be mouth oh, forest. It'd be oh, something yeah. like that. It's that like two Chinese symbols was there, and that was it. Yeah. But um, but I've got a big cover up now with like a, a military remembrance tattoo now, which means yeah, a lot yeah, to me. So, um, there's there's obviously people yeah. that uh, I know. A guy in, in Canada, he's got a, a, a huge tattoo on his on his back, but it's from a dream, and it, it's a bizarre picture. Uh, it's got something to do with the moon, but it, it's a it's a dream that accompanied him sort of waking up to what was excellent in him and what was absolute bullshit in him, and yeah, not I, kidding himself anymore. You know, I, like it means something to him. And it's a, it's a, you know, it's a Oh, absolutely. Well, Thank that's you. it. If it means something to him, then yeah, I'm not brilliant. a few like that. But I know, I know others that just got it for peer pressure. Well, you could have that's it said too. Well, when my mate was in there having one done, so I did. <laughs> I went into, went into tattoo place, tattoo shop stuff several times, looking through everything that they had in the catalogues and up on the walls, and there was just nothing that took my fancy. Isn't there somebody in Glasgow though? I've, I've heard a few people on the island that. There's a, the, he's the closest uh, tattoo artist that people, you have to book months in advance and there's just some, yeah. something, yeah. almost, ah yeah, there's a Roald Dahl story like that, where uh, there's this, there's bump, James basically. and the giant tat. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, James getting his uh, tramp stamp. <laughs> getting the peeps tattooed on his ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Sorry, go on. <laughs> hey, where, there's this, this, this bump. Uh, he's he's living a pampered life on some secluded beach, like a, like a high uh, resort of some sort, you know. And he's just living it up, getting handed uh, drinks, but he's he gets people coming in and massaging and, and uh, moisturising his back. And the deal is, this uh, tattoo artist wants to somebody's such a fan of his work, he paid this bum to go in and get a full body tattoo. And he, his deal is, you just live out your life on the beach, and when you die from you know alcoholism or whatever, then I get to keep your your back. 
What, peel his back off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And could oh, hang up. That's, that's Animal letter. Stuff, Roald Dahl's got uh, you know a bit of a <laughs> the grown-up stories a wee bit Jesus. fiercer than the. <laughs> I think so. Good God. But you would do that. Would you take that deal if you were down and out? You. Know? Oh, I'd take it anyway. <laughs> I'm, 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 yeah, I'm I'll cheap. sign up right I'm now. Cheap. Let's be honest. When you're dead, you're dead. Isn't Free you? drinks, beach. What more do you want? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you live for eternity as a work of art. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I think I'm going to get a bun of Harvins tattooed in my next one. Not really. All right, tell you a story. This is a UK oh, story. Oh, come on then. Because uh, one of their special bottles, and I'm having drunk this, I'm very happy if they're going to keep this in their core right, range. Right, go on Because five doesn't give you much encouragement, but once you try it, it's like, yeah, I'm happy. I'm very happy. Anyway, now one of their other special releases um, was Kelpie. Yes. Right? So I think they're taking more, it's got nothing to do with here, it's a whole uh, Celtic and especially Scottish uh, legend. So apparently the Kelpie uh, is, is not known, it's place by place, whether it can be just living in the sea or is in any puddle that's been there for half an hour. It can be, you know, but it's like this horse creature, beautiful horse, you know, and you step a toe in the water and it's either beautiful or it will just bite you and eat you or it will drag you into the murky yeah, depths. Can I ask you a question, is that what the Kelpies, is that the big horses they got at Falkirk, the big statue monument, they're Kelpies, they're yeah. called the Kelpies are they? Mm. Alright cool, All right, back to you. Yeah I saw something like that because the, the first thing I saw about that was this is a statue of a, chain, a shape changing monster which seems like a bit of a clash of concepts there. <laughs> One thing as well, but also if you want to get, if, you, if it is about to drag you under uh, you can bite your own hand and the fingers off that will sort of detach you from a sticky mane which might be made of snakes uh, and then it won't be able to drag you under. Which Medusa. Medusa like, yes. Didn't she have hair with snakes? Yeah. Pubic the hair. The The pubic hair. They didn't specify, did they? <laughs> Usually you see her, her face all ringed with uh, the yeah. snakes, but yeah. Might you might be, be down right. there as well. Of, what was it, Vin Vagina Dentata? <laughs> <laughs> There's snakes all about. <laughs> well, we'll have to go to Roald Dahl again and see what he's written about. The, the Judas, the so, Judas Kelpie, Sears. that's another one there. Now, our big. I was trying to scare you there. That yeah, didn't it didn't really... work. Didn't work. The most our big bottles have got this black label, don't they? They have the black label. And they actually do one with a silver label. Do you remember that? I don't know. It's called Perpetuum. And it's the, the never ending. Infinity sign. Yeah, yeah, and that was to do with their anniversary they had a few years back. Was that 200, 250 years? I can't remember now. Seems very right. It's something like that. Anyway, so, and what it was, that was to, we would say 200 just for the, for, for the sake of, of the explanation, but, so what it was, it was to say that the perpetuum, the, the never ending, so that's like to the proof, that's like to the last 200 and on onward for the next 200 like years Like your man as well. Buzz Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear, yeah, to infinity and beyond. It? it was a touching moment in the yeah. Heart Perpetuum story mate, of our he's celebrating the previous two hundred years of history and is celebrating the next two hundred to come. Mm. And that was probably, in my opinion, their best one. Best one that I've drank of this. If you said to me if you want an R bag, I'd probably say no I'm good cheers because I'm not a fan of the feet. You need to but taste Perpetuum your way through it. Is good. The uh, the ten, to be honest, that, that that one forever ago, I don't know what the ten is like, I've not had it in a while. It's popular, it's isn't miniatures. it? Miniatures. You never know which batch you're getting with a yeah. miniature, right? Uh, so but the, the tour I went on with that lovely girl for, forever ago, right? Were you in love with a girl or what? How old were you? Were you similar age at the time? No, touch older, not not crazy older, yeah. I don't know. You need to get some. Ah, I don't, it's just a wee crush at the time, that's all. Ah, there we go, so it was a crush. It's not we're doing our good just tour. Just during the, the tour. She's I probably as dull as dishwater. But I didn't know her before or after, it was just during the, crush, uh, during the, the tour, it was a lovely thing. So anyway, at the end they, they served up, it was the, the or she laid, laid out the supernova, the Yugadal and the, the ten. You could try, right. try each of them. Yeah. A bit more generous in the tour back then. <laughs> uh, and she'd been talking about, so we want to avoid these tastes of basically burnt rubber. And the, the Cory Vrecken mm. was burnt rubber. That's what just leapt out. I remember that one being, I wanted to like it, I just didn't. The Yugadal. I wasn't that impressed with the ten, it was watered down, I didn't like it. Mm. But the, the, it was just sort of yeah. insipid would be the thing. But another one the of those. Kill Dalton Cross. Not tried that. 
I haven't got, they don't do it anymore. I think that's finished now, but yeah. I'm not sure. But that was one, literally the label's got the picture of the Kildorton Cross, which is something that we'll probably bring up the details of what the actual Kildorton Cross is. We'll, we'll actually yeah, take an outside forecast we'll there. there and the, we'll bring that it up and, but like I say, we'll, we'll re reiterate the fact that this is one that our big name, one of their bottles after. Um, but yeah, so again, a bit of local history and stuff that we can voyage the tears with. Preferably no falling over and stuff when we get there. Yeah, you watch yourself. It's quite safe to... You practice walking with a camera, that mad combination of skills. Well, at the end of the day, you weren't even going to come with me on that trip, were you? It was just going to be me with my selfie stick and my phone. Go so out all there the footage would have been that. It's just, oh, a bit, yeah, oh, be there. Oh. That's why I said at the start when I said the chance I'll fall over half a dozen times. Hopefully it won't be caught on camera. Fell over once, bang, it's on camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had a few... No, yeah, we were down... You were on your arse a few times, but yeah. God. But when I fell oh, over and I'm laying down on the floor swearing and laughing, <laughs> first thing I did was kneel up to see if you'd send me. Because there's nothing worse than that when you make a cock up like that. Seeing if I was said, laughing in the next valley. I mean, they could hear you screeching, <laughs> but... Yeah. Dear God. Looking for my address. Buddy. It's one of them ones we should send off to Jeremy Beadle. We could get 250 quid for that. I'm not being nasty. Is he? Is Beadle about? <laughs> That's the name of his show, um, wouldn't it be? He's the one with a funny little hand, wasn't he? But is he? I think he's still alive. Like he's probably is still getting sent videos. Oh, I thought he was a bit of a pervert. Oh, I actually I went, had to be in those days. Do you remember you? how his where his career started on telly? Certainly not. It was a show called Game was for a like Laugh. Five or something. Oh, when he was doing himself. Game for a Laugh. It was called. And I actually went to the studios in London and watched an episode being made. And hence the insight that he's a pervert. There was him, there's Matthew Carrot. Matthew um who's one of those tonight, Matthew, I'm gonna be. No, Matthew. I know Kelly. the phrase. You've got the bloke that did going for gold, Hen Henry Kelly, Irish fella, and a woman. What was her name? I don't know. But anyway, the four of them, they were doing all little sketches and little game show things. Um, yeah, and I actually watched that being made up in London many, many moons ago. When TV was four channels and you no know, remotes. You're hassling me about my lovely bird that I'd beg and your, that's your bloody story as I went to see Look. a pair for 30 years ago making <laughs> just, not just, be a uh, just for laughs. Because his programme came for a laugh and then um, it was, who took over from him on Beatles ah. About? Not Beatles About, what was it? Anyway, sorry I'm boring that. Um, what other ones did they have in their bottles? There's got to be one we've forgotten, surely. Oh, there's loads, but I will say this, right? So, uh, back in the days of... Uh, Is it about that bird again? No, no, there's other. Oh, it's right. more life than just those girls. She's, you know, she could have fooled me. Go on. Years ago, Ardbeg put out this ridiculous bottle. Uh, it's called Ardbeg More. Or more. Did, four and a half liters. M O R. Four and a half liters. What do you have? Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what size? What would that be classed as? That ball. See, when I was in uh, in Canada, mm -hmm. somebody had a, a birthday and they came out with what's called a Texas Mickey, which is three liters of uh, Morgan Spice Rum. And oh. I'm just saying, I can't remember if there was about I don't know ten of us there. Nobody leaves till we finished this, <laughs> and we're drinking those big uh, party cups, you know. Oh. Uh, and basically, I could not I could not smell that stuff for the next five years. System got so so sensitive to Morgan Spice Run, we shall have none of this. But yeah, it was a good night. Do you still drink it now? You back I'm back, I, yeah, I managed, but I, I don't enjoy it. But I can at least do it without uh, yeah, yeah. Ireland. Good grief. So anyway, like, that's a Texas Mickey, like, based on the idea of everything, even we things in Texas are huge. And that, our beg blew them out of the water with another <laughs> litre and a half in that bottle. I remember I worked 1900 at, pounds. I worked at a hotel on the island and we had some Spanish millionaires, nine of them I think there was, millionaires at some whiskey club. And they rented the whole house, Isla House, all the bedrooms, and we, we actually took outside catering down to Lagavulin. I, I was hosting them down at Lagavulin um, in this little room they've got with the bar and and then they were at the hotel they're there for like four nights but they had the big six litre bottles of mouton rothschild like 1989 rothschild yeah. and me and the, one of the owners at the time we actually googled it like six grand a bottle and these guys were but we had to strain it it was so the sediment in this red wine we were literally using white linen napkins is that correct yeah oh god i yeah but it would do because that been sat around that long 
No, but is that what you're supposed to do? You're not supposed to just pour it and let it settle well, in the glass? Well, you could have done, but they wanted it decanting. They wanted it in decanters. So you pour it out, and then the sediment's going to go with it, and then it just looks awful. So we um, we, de we decanted it. We you just soak in the cloths afterwards? Oh, or oh, yeah, it was like velvet, like liquid velvet. Yeah. I've never known anything like it. Stunning. Absolutely. Ah, I love things like that. that and I have four different bottles. One white bottle or something. When you actually get it, it's like this actually delivers. This is like the these real bottles deal. like this. Big fat things like this. And it's mm. like, oh, I can't think what it's, they were called, the bottles. It wasn't Magnum. They were the Imperial. Does that sound right? Is it Imperial? I'm going to have to go. This is them. actual categories of uh, Yeah, category of bottles. container. Yeah, or, or just standard bottle. Like you yes. get a Jeroboam, like you Magnum get Magnum, and then you get this. Yeah. I'm going to have to look at it. I'm thinking Imperial or Imperium, something like that. I'm going to Google that. I'll to stay tuned for the next. I can, yeah, the, the, the real episode is we yeah. can just spout off any other amount of guff. Yeah. The leathers is where we get real. That's where. The leathers is the apologise and give you some actual facts. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what we'll do next time. Is there any other thing that we need to go over again for next leathers? Don't know. But well, the only thing I remember from the last one, this is just a total change of subject, yeah. is I uh, didn't mention uh, when Trolls were coming up with the what was the best chips. I know you don't care about this, but Johnny well, was you mentioning You in that bloody it. chip shop, you Look, and Johnny. Uh, chips and things, the Grove Chippy and Frost the Bakers and Ruse Leap, they're all still up and running, they're all still in business and just phenomenal spots for, for donuts and for burgers and for fish and chips. Talking like of donuts. Montrose, you're not a guest. I liked them donuts last time. And Whiskey Dave's donuts. not getting a do I'll bring you donuts when Dave gets his sausage rolls or his pizza crust or whatever he gets. <laughs> pizza crust and cheesecake. <laughs> do you get, do you get, what about getting him a muffin top? Just the top? Yeah, that's what I sell in America. You can buy muffin tops. So like where you get the muffin, well, just for, then you get the bit that a woman's like, love handles. Yeah, yeah, but it's not. It's actually a thing. The top of the muffin, and it goes like that. And that's what you have get. You get people's just there. Yeah, but that's what you get. You just get the top. You can buy the top. And they're called muffin tops. You just buy, rather than buying a whole muffin, you just buy that. Why wouldn't buy the whole For the diet option. I don't know. No, probably not, because it's still fattening, isn't it? Of course. Google that. I'm gonna have a, I'll Google I'm that again. Nothing. I'm going to Google that. Yeah. You should have a pen and paper. Have you got your scrap of paper with all your facts? You must yeah, well, have. Yeah, I figured we'd drink for a while, and then I'd dig out all my <laughs> fascinating. <laughs> or I wouldn't necessarily stretch it that far, but facts at least, or things. Oh, but uh, one should get, just we've alluded to it loads of times, is saying that, that resentful tour guide is saying, oh, we're proper special. But part of the thing that makes you feel sorry for Ardbeg's history is that for a little blip in time, they're owned by the same people, allied distillers, they're owned by the same people as uh, Lefroy. But uh, allied basically were, uh, the place was so run into the ground, they were just using them for spare parts. You know, like if they're needing a stave for the for the washback, I just pop down to our bag, rip it off, and chuck it on. Is onto that what they're doing? Oh man, look bits of the stills and bits of the all the equipment that's just using it. That like that's hideous. Well, you know what? Fair play to our bag because they've turned it around. They're yeah. doing some good stuff. And and then that plays into how much love uh, Louis Vuitton, Moe, Hennessy, yeah. Louis Vuitton have poured in. Yeah. They're just cult like cultivating and love you know, and money, nurturing it back into yeah. something. Absolutely good for them. Anyway, anything they do is good with me now. Yeah. You know, you, when you know their past a little bit. And I'll tell you what else they did, and I've not seen them since. They had pictures, paintings on the wall outside. So where you look from the visitor centre, as you come out of the shop or the restaurant, you look across the courtyard, hmm. and you had all, where all the windows and stuff were, they actually had big pictures. Oh, I don't remember. It was fantastic. And I don't know if that was just for a face or face year live festival. Oh, or you know in the Ballygrant Inn? Yes. Was it the same artist? Like he did a few around the island. Oh, didn't I he? don't know, but there's, there must have been twenty pictures up on the wall. Mm. You know, big frame pictures, and it was almost a cover. Well, frame the, pictures. You don't mean no. on onto the wall directly. No, no, not uh, directly onto the wall. No, they were onto. I'd see onto like, covering wood big and mold spots and holes in the wall. They were just covering up stuff. like the the windows and stuff of the obviously a storage building or something over there. I don't yeah. know what it was, but absolutely superb. Because mm. they've got the big double decker bus in there now. They've got a big green double decker bus in there, and that's where you go in to do your tastings. I'm not sure I've seen that even. It's actually parked, it's parked in that time. courtyard, big army green courtyard. Yeah, I went uh, off the place bus, for a while because yeah. I'd done the tour a few times right. and it got a bit too, to my taste, I'd done it, it got, got a bit too touristy. Uh, but now I'm back in love with the place. No? But their little logo, they have the little Jack Russell dog. 
Murphy. The thing they've got like a Jack Russell goes on a lot of their promotional stuff now. They've got just a big, bit no, they got a big picture. It's a little Jack Russell. It's almost like the old um, his master his master's voice was it called back in the day? Yeah, that's it. And he's sat next to the megaphone, no, not a megaphone on the on the gramophone speaker thing. I think that's kind of where they're going with that. Because obviously I got my little Jack Russell downstairs, you know, Pete. Yeah, I don't I'm gonna bring him up here one day. He's a nice guy. He's a good kid, isn't he, Pete? Yeah. My dog, Pete, spelt P-E-A-T. So it's like Pete, Pete, not just short for Peter. Clever. Yeah, he adopted him. He's a good little boy. Mm. But I'm just scared to bring him up here because he'd probably go rooting and we'd never see him for hours. But I might bring him up here, let you all see the dog, see the mutt. Come up and feast on spiders. Yeah, yeah. Rats and mice, he'd be all right, but... Are we going to send it out to anybody, or should we just? Oh yeah, we of probably solemn? should chuck this back earlier in the show, though. Yeah, but well, you can still chuck cut it out that to back somebody. Out. Yeah, should we do chuck it out to our Solon bit, or nah, that's going to be long. We'll chuck that on like five minutes at the end. At the we'll end. put somebody okay. maybe get a tune off Johnny or Dave or something. Yeah. Right. Okay, right. So what we're going to do now, folks, is we're going to take a wee break here in the up in the attic. Me and Mother's all properly. Show. Yeah, we decided we're going to try and be professional. No, we didn't. We didn't know we're going to be professional. But anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to take a break. We're going to hand you over to... I don't know. Andy. I never know. I'd say this every week. I don't know why. I'm even speculating. But it's either going to be Dave or Johnny. What do you think people would like to see me digging a tick out of my leg? Who? Seeing you take a tick out of your leg. That might be... Well, that one on your ass. <laughs> no. No one wants to see your I've already ass. got the one out of my ankle. Yeah, but you don't take them out properly, do you? You just squeeze them until they're dead, isn't it? I just use tweezers. Just rip it out. You have your own tweezers. How many men own tweezers? Seriously, guys, how many of you men own tweezers? I got scalps and I got them actually it's mostly for the shit ticks. For his fucking eyebrows. Do you want to see? I've got wee beastie eyebrows to the max. <laughs> wee beastie eyebrows. Yeah, right? Well, like these. They bottle. They should name a whiskey after I'm that. Not sure if you can see the beetle <laughs> legs of my eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> They're definitely not getting plucked, is what I'm saying. Anyway, what we might do is have Rodney, How the hell did this... Rodney removing a tick, Dave doing a poem or singing or doing something. We could have Johnny playing a tune. We could have Katie doing some bloody random... Just the one tick is worth it. Oh, bastard. Keep these things... Right, here we go everybody. Welcome back. <laughs> As you can see the top of Rodney's head, that means his head's down, he's reading. Kieran Walker, that's who the guy was talking the about. The scrawl on his bit of paper. We're gonna get some facts now, some real, real interesting stuff from Rodney. Oh man. Oh really, yes, yeah. jumping out already. What? Come on in Rodney. Well, it's just I hear him so he's the guy behind the he commissioned the, the A. He was a bit of a flamboyant creature, you know, but the eye of our big. Yeah, but I think they were they were producing some different liquids back then. People see what that looks like for those that don't know. You can see it on the eye that I don't know where your camera is on yours, but if I, I do that, that you can get it. Oh, that's for audio. Let's go back to that one. <whistles> Sound effects and everything up here, Rodders. So that's the eye. That's how that got commissioned. Rodders has told you. Go on next. What are they famous for? I can't. Famous. Like, I just can't. I can't make out. It's a bit of design, you know. I can't make out whether this guy is just a sort of a flamboyant joke or whether he's actually, he was he was turning the, you know, sort of modernising and turning the place around. And, uh, like, is he responsible for running it into the ground or was was he part of his highlight? Because their, their first sort of uh, commemorative releases were all from his, during his period, the 24-year-old, that kind of period. Oh, right. Yeah. It's hard to make out, you know. But you don't give a shit. There's another. There's words. another guy. There's another guy who's interesting because he was brought over when Glenmorangie uh, bought them. Bought them out in Is that how you pronounce it, Glenmorangie? Because no, a lot of people call it Glenmorangie. That's how I always no, pronounced it down in England. But it's Morangie, isn't it? Morangie. Mm, something Morangie. closer to that. I wouldn't oh, take okay. me as any kind of pronunciation either. Oh, okay. uh, he was brought in from another distillery uh, when they took it over because he'd been in the business since 19, the early 1960s. He was the only one who could work the Ardbeg. Uh, machinery. Like it was that old, it was oh that, God, that out of date <laughs> that he was the only one who was familiar with it, you know, that could actually get it back up and running. I was away in uh, in Tobermory 
in uh, uh, you know Cara's moved over there and they're doing the uh, tour but she was doing it as production staff we need to do some more of those at the distillery because all of the, the, the there's a Spanish galleon that went down out there right that is pure romance what's the history of the place what's the place like and she said look at this this piece of equipment uh, the woman living working there says uh, Diana should say look at this piece of equipment it's gorgeous it's ancient Shake my head. I hate it because it doesn't give me precision. Yeah. Right. So the point is, and she used the word organo, organoleptic as well. Organoleptic qualities. Who said that? Cara. And it's like, oh, listen, see, there you go. You actually jump She's into this proper engineering of fine whiskies, and yeah, never mind all the romantic guff. You've got no patience for any of that. And Cara. Yeah. And I'm trying to say is that we. I know you're we basically going to get put into a coma here, mm. but. We get some no. some guff off uh, the pro actual production staff or other people, Absolutely. distillers who know. Um, so I've got a problem with that. As long as it's blended with, like you say, the romance of it all, the stories, the, the folklore, it's, it's a bit of all sorts that's got to go with it. Like I say, if we just did factual tours, mm. people would be switching off. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. I'm not saying to bring that into the tours, but just to have it in the background of the tours. Yeah, 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 I know what you're saying. You know, like my curtsying lady, you know, they're being able to, being able to just sort of, the, 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 the tears a little, you know. The, uh, today's word for putting you in a coma with boredom comes off Ben, actually, was a, a zeotrope. A zeotrope? Yeah. And how does that mean? Well, it means not a zeo boil trope change or turn. Still none the wiser. Which means you can't you can't keep boiling wash to get a hundred percent alcohol. No. Oh. Yeah. So the, the um eventually you burn out what you need. No, it's it's just that the the Oh, what's that? Basically they, they sort of like hanging together more than they like hanging to themselves. You know, they get bond it's not a bond, but basically you can't just keep boiling them out. I'm kicking the arse of this. <laughs> <laughs> the word is a zeotrope, and I understand the principle, <laughs> but... <laughs> God. Oh, that is bad, Kevin. <laughs> I'm trying to do it without bringing in the sort of, here's this physical principle yeah. to do with difference of vapour. This is my fear. If people listen to this as a podcast, are they going to fall asleep at the wheel if they're listening in the car? Oh, oh do this oh, then. What? <laughs> whatever, I say, whatever I say about Ignore. how the, the oh. distilling works, we'll put it into distiller's bits. Like a bit like the snippets, right? But right. instead of snippets being just little bits that were a bit of a laugh and a little bit of conversation and whatever, the distillers' bits just don't watch them. Just don't watch them. But they'll just be there as credentials. Yeah. Saying occasionally off getting slapped about by the actual producers and distillers. Occasionally there's actual knowledge just sitting yeah, there to be ignored stuff. off in the corner. Oh, yeah. And don't don't waste your time with it, but it's there. Because yeah. we've got a lot of other things other than just the main episode, haven't we? There's the one offs, we've got the snippets. What's better? Who's going to waste their time watching a whole hour of this? Me. Oh, yeah, of course, it is basically. See, I actually do watch this all the way through once we've. Well, obviously, I do as well. I'm but I, I did more for the. Like, to get the... What part of that was the, can we make better? Oh, yeah, you've been, you've been full of great ideas of, uh, you know, just honing this and tuning it up. And <laughs> Not really. But it's like I just don't want to go down the boring roads that people aren't going to be interested in. Because like I say, it's the audience, isn't it? We've got it's all about it. It's about the audience, it's about you, the thousands of viewers that we've got. Don't be hanging back that far back in a frame. Sit back up properly and show some love to the camera. I mean, it is really you you're talking to, so... Oh, look at that guff. You said... You're going to start making feminist speeches again. You said show patronizing love. patronising to women. <laughs> I, I meant with you. your eyes. Because you made it that way. <laughs> Yeah. Show love with your eyes. I can't busy. I've got a biscuit. Mate, I don't know why. You've got glasses on. You can't even see my eyes. I've got my new teeth, by the way. I'm not wearing them because they hurt too much. So I've got to get them out. Actually, you just took them out. Bottom ones, yeah. Too painful. You were showing them. Oh, no, it was a different set. That's the top set last time. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. So um, Still, that is a regular bit, is you just show off a bit of your yeah, body. Yeah, like, like, look, look teeth the update. Yeah. Nothing exciting, just, you know the nape of the neck, that kind of business. So you're going to film yourself getting that tick out? Well, I've got that bit already. You filmed it? Yeah. Not the arse one. <laughs> lumbar. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you're a pain in my lumbar, you are. <laughs>
Well, what's better, lumbar or lower back or whatever? Arse. Upper arse. Exactly, the upper arse. <laughs> upper crevice. <laughs> 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 oh man, that's one of Johnny used to watch uh, Birdman. It was one of the grossest bits Ooh. in it. It doesn't matter. It was a cartoon, but it was, the oh. point was this stunt man on there, the ancient stunt man. He's got this ancient groupie, you know, and he's saying he's getting sued because a kid crippled himself by jumping <laughs> jumping into a ravine like him. And when oh. he when he says, you know, I get sued for this kid jumping into the ravine, his groupie's over in the corner going. Hey, <laughs> and they scoosh her down with a fire extinguisher. <laughs> so in the upper ravine, I've got a tick burrowing around in there that I can't reach. And I'm not going to show you though. But but how are you going to get it out then? Just by contortions and a mirror and some well, tweezers. Don't they, don't they say put tick Vaseline tweezers. on it or something? Because I've it just put rubbing alcohol breathe. on it. You can't breathe then, can it? Yeah. You breathe through its arse, doesn't it? It burrows in head first, breathes out of its arse. Ravine. Yeah, out of its crevice. Yeah. <laughs> And then, um, but they say put Vaseline or put somewhat on it that's that usually put so it comes out for air to breathe. Yeah, but I don't know. I just usually I just we just, it when we just use tick pull it when we even tall and then whack a bit of vodka on it. You take the piss out of me for owning tweezers and you've actually even though you never get bites by them you've picked up a, a tick room. But the dog, I've got a dog oh, that gets covered in ticks. Fair enough. Yeah, apology accepted. <laughs> I do apologise for your sake. Hey, I'm what? entirely in the wrong. <laughs> Damn it. Whoever thought you'd say that. <laughs> well, it's true. <laughs> I'm not good at mocking people. You've got a flair for it. Just... I am. I'm a natural. Oh, it's so a lot of drinking. Good, wasn't it? I enjoyed that. Oh, we had a beautiful night. day. Stunning weather. Blue skies. Lovely. But it's so hard to hold a camera and walk at the same time. Looking through the camera. It's like chewing gum and holding a camera at the same time. Well, no, because you're walking like that, but you can't see where your feet are, if you know what I mean. You're watching what you're focusing on and you're chipping over rocks. Half the place has fallen down. Do you see what I mean? That's why I went. Oh, so making right. excuses for it. Oh, I stepped backwards. Now, one rock there that had no, no, no right to be there. there yeah. <laughs> it's also funny because I, I was way off looking for uh, the adder holes and uh, also the well. We were wanting to find that well. Yeah, and I only hear the whooping and hauling from <laughs> across the way. <laughs> I'm lying on the floor laughing. The combination of swearing and Laughing and swearing. And... <laughs> but it was priceless. Even I've enjoyed watching that 20 times. You admit to that? Yeah. By the end of the day. Fun. It's funny. Trouble is now that I've been drinking and, and unpeated, this is gonna taste even more peated than not at all, isn't it? Well you were saying you were gonna come grab some water or something. Oh, right? I said if I had some up here I could spit in it. No, I didn't. Go dunk in the drippy. Oh, yeah, that'd there. be right. Coming yeah. in from the ceiling. Oh, I mean roof water. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of water do you recommend to mix with your drink? Rain. What we should do, we should let's run over we should have a little Scottish shutter lakes. out there with a bit of pipe coming in. That would be class, that would tap be. on it. Yeah, that'd be good. Wouldn't it? I like the little gesture, you knew exactly the sort of piece of equipment you're dealing with. Yeah, yeah the little tap spigot, spigot. See, you going all technical again. You have to do it, don't you? Well, clearly, it can't not just be a little tap, can it? It has to be a spigot. Yeah, it's got legs, isn't it? Oh. Talking to you anymore. <laughs> Never seems to turn out right. What then? Talking, I'm really... Talking to me? Yeah. <laughs> I keep thinking I'm catching sight of living beasties, but it's mostly just wafty about old it's cobwebs. cobwebs yeah, because yeah. I've got the little fan heater blowing. It's. Yeah. <laughs> so, how are you doing? Huh? How are you doing? All right, yeah. Are you yeah. suffering? Not particularly. I've got a bit. Are you enjoying oh, yourself? I mean, are you, are you getting anything more than just the peak? Not really. Yes, but no, it's not. Cause I was expecting it, gentle? it to be. Yeah, it's not as a, anywhere near as aggressive as I thought it was going to be. 47's not. No, you know, not alcohol wise, I'm talking peak. I know, but I'm just yeah. saying in the whole no. experience, there's nothing Nothing screams at you. It no. doesn't, it's not burning all down your chest. No, I'm getting nothing from that, which is good. Don't like the burning chest bit. That's It's not boring either, though. You know, I really would fancy a drop or two of water just to see. Mm. But it's all right. 
for a piece, it's alright. I wouldn't want any more than I've got, but it's yeah. alright. Just get a drink and let you talk. Alright, well, folks, that's the end of this, uh, the end of the attic, the episode. Um, thanks to Arbo for a lovely dram. We're more than happy with that one this week, weren't we? Lots of nice stories. I'm, oh, I mean, a we, nice we stories. did a scrappy, messy job of conveying them, but I actually yeah. enjoyed finding out about we'll this place. We'll confirm a few facts again, and probably them. stuff that we... We weren't over. Oh, the blethers, yeah, cleaned up for So everything. when we do the blethers set episode next, um, you'll see a bit more about that. Um, but yeah, not a bad dram. Not bad. I'm not a Peter fan, but you know what? Not bad. Not disappointed with that. Not. I'm pleasantly surprised it wasn't as bad as I thought. Yeah. Do you want a little ching? We didn't do a oh, ching yeah. today. Must be nice. Hold the bass. That's Let's it. get that good. Oh, yeah, now you got that. That's angelic as well. It is. It's beautiful, mate, isn't it? I'm drinking out my Wessex whiskey glass again. So I left our special ones downstairs. We've got Brookladio. What was the other one? I had another glass somewhere. Well, that's all friendly. That's Kalila. Yeah. So anyway, that's the end of the episode, guys. Thanks ever so much for tuning in. Stay stay on for a bit longer. We're just going to um, show you a little bit of a little um, an intro into the episode about our little uh, day jaunt out to Solom. Um, it's a bit of a laugh. Just to watch him fall. It's over. worth watching just to see me fall flat on my ass. Um, but I mean, like, yeah, it's, it's a nice day, good recording, so you'll hopefully see a little bit more of the island while you're there. The island, um, beautiful part down south, down by Arbeg. So stay tuned, watching. Please like and subscribe. Um, good to get us in. 12 million light years to somewhere else, supernova. Well, no, these are all names of their drinks, isn't it? Oh, not bad. Can't find this bloody village yet. What well, is? But what they were doing was when they got the plate, they were shunting them out to this village of Solom, which is a, a few kilometers north of the, the, the distillery of Ardbeg down there. Um, and what they would do is each night the villagers would bring out, find this flat rock somewhere. They would leave food um, and that's how they would know whether the people in the village were still alive. If the food gets taken every night or every day, then they would know that the people there are still alive. Okay, so as we come along here, and then you're gonna to start to see Ardbeg Distillery, the roofs of the buildings at Ardbeg. I've zoomed it in a bit. You might be able to just see the top of the chimney stacks. There you go, that's Ardbeg. Far distance there, you can actually see the outline of Northern Ireland. And then coming back down this way. <laughs> this little mound here is like a wall. It's Definitely man made. So this area where we stood could possibly be in a, like a communal area, probably the local co op. And when they come up thousands of years, hundreds of years, whatever it is. But yeah, so this is what we're looking at. I would suggest, and the wee house over here, if you if you care to follow me, Rodney, this is obviously split into two. So this bit here would probably be the living quarters, kitchen, bathroom, and a bit on the end is probably the shit house. Ooh. Would be my guess. You don't want to be, mind you, they probably just dropped logs everywhere, didn't they? Back in the day. Oh, there that were several people. Maybe somewhere I put a couple of sheep in there. You know what I mean? Mm. But would the sheep get the plague? Who knows? Anyway, let's, let's come to the end and I'll show you the length ways on. There you go. Now you can see more of a outline of a house. <laughs> we can have a dram. Got to be done. Walk out, it's been a day. Lovely day. Completely lost at times, but we've had a laugh. We found um, a lot more village. We found <laughs> more village. Over it, but... Yeah, we keep tripping over village. But just look at this backdrop, guys. Hey, it's beautiful, isn't it? You could live out here, couldn't you? Plague or not. Cracking. <laughs>